Volatile organic compounds are organic chemicals that have a high vapor pressure at ordinary room temperature. Their high vapor pressure results from a low boiling point, which causes large numbers of molecules to evaporate or sublimate from the liquid or solid form of the compound and enter the surrounding air, a trait known as volatility. For example, formaldehyde, which evaporates from paint and releases from materials like quartz, has a boiling point of only 19 degrees Celsius Vox are numerous, varied, and ubiquitous. They include both human-made and naturally occurring chemical compounds. Most scents or odors are a vox. Vox play an important role in communication between plants, and messages from plants to animals. Some vox are dangerous to human health or cause harm to the environment. Anthropogenic vox are regulated by law, especially indoors, where concentrations are the highest. Harmful vox typically are not acutely toxic, but have compounding long-term health effects. Because the concentrations are usually low and the symptoms slow to develop, research into vox and their effects is difficult. Definitions Diverse definitions of the term VOC are in use. The definitions of VOX used for control of precursors of photochemical smog used by the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency and state agencies in the U.S. with independent outdoor air pollution regulations include exemptions for VOX that are determined to be non reactive, or of low reactivity in the smog formation process. In the U.S., regulatory requirements for VOX vary among the states. Most prominent is the VOC regulation issued by the South Coast Air Quality Management District in California and by the California Air Resources Board However, this specific use of the term VOX can be misleading, especially when applied to indoor air quality because many chemicals that are not regulated as outdoor air pollution can still be important for indoor air pollution. California's ARB uses the term, ''reactive organic gases'' to measure organic gases after public hearing in September 1995. The ARB revised the definition of ''volatile organic compounds'' used in the Consumer Products Regulations, based on their committee's findings. Canada Health Canada classifies VOX as organic compounds that have boiling points roughly in the range of 50 to 250 degrees Celsius (122 to 482 degrees Fahrenheit). The emphasis is placed on commonly encountered VOX that would have an effect on air quality. Topic: <laughs> European Union The European Union defines a VOC as, "...any organic compound having an initial boiling point less than or equal to 250 degrees Celsius degrees Fahrenheit measured at a standard atmospheric pressure of 101.3 kPa." The VOC Solvents Emissions Directive is the main policy instrument for the reduction of industrial emissions of volatile organic compounds in the European Union. It covers a wide range of solvent-using activities, e.g. printing, surface cleaning, vehicle coating, dry cleaning and manufacture of footwear and pharmaceutical products. The VOC Solvents Emissions Directive requires installations in which such activities are applied to comply either with the emission limit values set out in the directive or with the requirements of the so-called reduction scheme. Article 13 of the Paints Directive, approved in 2004, amended the original VOC Solvents Emissions Directive and limits the use of organic solvents in decorative paints and varnishes and in vehicle finishing products. The Paints Directive sets out maximum VOC content limit values for paints and varnishes in certain applications. China. The People's Republic of China defines a VOC as those compounds that have "...originated from automobiles, industrial production and civilian use, burning of all types of fuels, storage and transportation of oils, fitment finish, coating for furniture and machines, cooking oil fume and fine particles and similar sources." 
The three-year action plan for winning the Blue Sky Defense War released by the State Council in July 2018 creates an action plan to reduce 2015 VOC emissions 10% by 2020. India The Central Pollution Control Board of India released the Air Prevention and Control of Pollution Act in 1981, amended in 1987, to address concerns about air pollution in India. While the document does not differentiate between VOX and other air pollutants, the CPCB monitors oxides of nitrogen (NOx), sulfur dioxide (SO2), fine particulate matter (PM10), and suspended particulate matter (SPM). Topic: <laughs> United States. VOX or specific subsets of the VOX are legally defined in the various laws and codes under which they are regulated. Other definitions may be found from government agencies investigating or advising about VOX. EPA regulates VOX in the air, water, and land. The federal regulations issued under the Safe Drinking Water Act set maximum contaminant level standards for several organic compounds in public water systems. EPA also publishes wastewater testing methods for chemical compounds, including a range of VOX, pursuant to the Clean Water Act. In addition to drinking water, VOX are regulated in pollutant discharges to surface waters, both directly and via sewage treatment plants, as hazardous waste, but not in non industrial indoor air. The Occupational Safety and Health Administration regulates VOC exposure in the workplace. Volatile organic compounds that are classified as hazardous materials are regulated by the Pipeline and Hazardous Materials Safety Administration while being transported. Biologically generated VOX Not counting methane, biological sources emit an estimated 1,150 teragrams of carbon per year in the form of VOX. The majority of VOX are produced by plants, the main compound being isoprene. The remainder are produced by animals and microbes. Microbial volatile organic compounds can also be beneficial, when used to control plant pathogens, for instance. The strong odor emitted by many plants consists of green leaf volatiles, a subset of VOX. Emissions are affected by a variety of factors, such as temperature, which determines rates of volatilization and growth, and sunlight, which determines rates of biosynthesis. Emission occurs almost exclusively from the leaves, the stomata in particular. A major class of vox is terpenes, such as myrcene. Providing a sense of scale, a forest 62,000 square kilometers in area the U.S. state of Pennsylvania is estimated to emit 3,400,000 kg of terpenes on a typical August day during the growing season. Vox should be a factor in choosing which trees to plant in urban areas. Induction of genes producing volatile organic compounds, and subsequent increase in volatile terpenes has been achieved in maize using Z 3 hexen one ol and other plant hormones. <laughs> Anthropogenic sources Anthropogenic sources emit about 142 teragrams of carbon per year in the form of vox. Topic. Specific components Topic. Paints and coatings A major source of man-made vox are coatings, especially paints and protective coatings. Solvents are required to spread a protective or decorative film. Approximately 12 billion liters of paints are produced annually. Typical solvents are aliphatic hydrocarbons, ethyl acetate, glycol ethers, and acetone. Motivated by cost, environmental concerns, and regulation, the paint and coating industries are increasingly shifting toward aqueous solvents. <laughs> Chlorofluorocarbons and chlorocarbons Chlorofluorocarbons, which are banned or highly regulated, were widely used cleaning products and refrigerants. 
Tetrachloroethene is used widely in dry cleaning and by industry. Topic: <laughs> Fossil fuels. The use of fossil fuels produces VOCs either directly as products e.g. gasoline or indirectly as byproducts e.g. automobile exhaust gas. Topic: <laughs> Benzene. One VOC that is a known human carcinogen is benzene, which is a chemical found in environmental tobacco smoke, stored fuels, and exhaust from cars. Benzene also has natural sources such as volcanoes and forest fires. It is frequently used to make other chemicals in the production of plastics, resins, and synthetic fibers. Benzene evaporates into the air quickly and the vapor of benzene is heavier than air allowing the compound to sink into low-lying areas. Benzene has also been known to contaminate food and water and if digested can lead to vomiting, dizziness, sleepiness, rapid heartbeat, and at high levels, even death may occur. Methylene chloride Methylene chloride can be found in adhesive removers and aerosol spray paints. In the human body, methylene chloride is metabolized to carbon monoxide. If a product that contains methylene chloride needs to be used the best way to protect human health is to use the product outdoors. If it must be used indoors, proper ventilation will help to keep exposure levels down. In the United States, methylene chloride is listed as exempt from VOC status. Perchloroethylene Perchloroethylene is a volatile organic compound that has been linked to causing cancer in animals. It is also suspected to cause many of the breathing-related symptoms of exposure to Vox. Perchloroethylene is used mostly in dry cleaning. While dry cleaners recapture perchloroethylene in the dry cleaning process to reuse it, some environmental release is unavoidable. MTBE. <inaudible> <inaudible> MTBE was banned in certain states in the U.S. around 2004 in order to limit further contamination of drinking water aquifers groundwater primarily from leaking underground gasoline storage tanks where MTBE was used as an octane booster and oxygenated additive. <laughs> Formaldehyde Many building materials such as paints, adhesives, wallboards, and ceiling tiles slowly emit formaldehyde, which irritates the mucous membranes and can make a person irritated and uncomfortable. Formaldehyde emissions from wood are in the range of 0.02 to 0.04 ppm. Relative humidity within an indoor environment can also affect the emissions of formaldehyde. High relative humidity and high temperatures allow more vaporization of formaldehyde from wood materials. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Indoor air. Since many people spend much of their time indoors, long-term exposure to vox in the indoor environment can contribute to sick building syndrome. In offices, VOC results from new furnishings, wall coverings, and office equipment such as photocopy machines, which can off-gas vox into the air. Good ventilation and air conditioning systems are helpful at reducing vox in the indoor environment. Studies also show that relative leukemia and lymphoma can increase through prolonged exposure of vox in the indoor environment. In the United States, there are two standardized methods for measuring vox, one by the National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health (NIOSH) and another by OSHA. Each method uses a single component solvent. Butanol and hexane cannot be sampled, however, on the same sample matrix using the NIOSH or OSHA method, the aromatic VOC compound benzene, emitted from exhaled cigarette smoke, is labeled as carcinogenic and is ten times higher in smokers than in nonsmokers. EPA has found concentrations of VOX in indoor air to be two to five times greater than in outdoor air and sometimes far greater. During certain activities indoor levels of vox may reach 1,000 times that of the outside air. 
Studies have shown that individual VOC emissions by themselves are not that high in an indoor environment, but the indoor total VOC TVOC concentrations can be up to five times higher than the VOC outdoor levels. New buildings especially, contribute to the highest level of VOC off-gassing in an indoor environment because of the abundant new materials generating VOC particles at the same time in such a short time period. In addition to new buildings, many consumer products emit VOX, therefore the total concentration of VOC levels is much greater within the indoor environment. VOC concentration in an indoor environment during winter is three to four times higher than the VOC concentrations during the summer. High indoor VOC levels are attributed to the low rates of air exchange between the indoor and outdoor environment as a result of tight shut windows and the increasing use of humidifiers. Topic: Indoor air quality measurements. Measurement of vox from the indoor air is done with sorption tubes e. g. 10x for vox and SVOCs or DNPH cartridges for carbonyl compounds. The vox adsorb on these materials and are afterwards desorbed either thermally (10x) or by elution (DNPH) and then analyzed by GCMS, FIT, or HPLC. Reference gas mixtures are required for quality control of these VOC measurements. Furthermore, VOC emitting products used indoors, e.g., building products and furniture, are investigated in emission test chambers under controlled climatic conditions. For quality control of these measurements, round robin tests are carried out, therefore, reproducibly emitting reference materials are ideally required. Topic. Regulation of indoor VOC emissions In most countries, a separate definition of VOX is used with regard to indoor air quality that comprises each organic chemical compound that can be measured as follows, adsorption from air on Tenex ta, thermal desorption, gas chromatographic separation over a 100% nonpolar column dimethylpolysiloxane. VOC volatile organic compounds are all compounds that appear in the gas chromatogram between and including n-hexane and n-hexadecane. Compounds appearing earlier are called VVOC very volatile organic compounds, compounds appearing later are called SVOC semi-volatile organic compounds. France, Germany, and Belgium have enacted regulations to limit VOC emissions from commercial products, and industry has developed numerous voluntary ecolabels and rating systems, such as EMICODE, M1, Blue Angel, and Indoor Air Comfort in the United States. Several standards exist. California Standard CDPH Section 01350 is the most common one. These regulations and standards changed the marketplace, leading to an increasing number of low-emitting products. <laughs> <laughs> Health risks Respiratory, allergic, or immune effects in infants or children are associated with man made vox and other indoor or outdoor air pollutants. Some vox, such as styrene and limonene, can react with nitrogen oxides or with ozone to produce new oxidation products and secondary aerosols, which can cause sensory irritation symptoms. Vox contribute to the formation of tropospheric ozone and smog. Health effects include eye, nose, and throat irritation, headaches, loss of coordination, nausea, and damage to the liver, kidney, and central nervous system. Some organics can cause cancer in animals, some are suspected or known to cause cancer in humans. Key signs or symptoms associated with exposure to Vox include conjunctival irritation, nose and throat discomfort, headache, allergic skin reaction, dyspnea, declines in serum cholinesterase levels, nausea, vomiting, nose bleeding, fatigue, dizziness. The ability of organic chemicals to cause health effects varies greatly from those that are highly toxic to those with no known health effects. As with other pollutants, the extent and nature of the health effect will depend on many factors including level of exposure and length of time exposed. Eye and respiratory tract irritation, headaches, dizziness, visual disorders, and memory impairment are among the immediate symptoms that some people have experienced soon after exposure to some organics. At present, not much is known about what health effects occur from the levels of organics usually found in homes. 
Many organic compounds are known to cause cancer in animals, some are suspected of causing, or are known to cause, cancer in humans. Reducing exposure To reduce exposure to these toxins, one should buy products that contain low vox or no vox. Only the quantity which will soon be needed should be purchased, eliminating stockpiling of these chemicals. Use products with vox in well-ventilated areas. When designing homes and buildings, design teams can implement the best possible ventilation plans, call for the best mechanical systems available, and design assemblies to reduce the amount of infiltration into the building. These methods will help improve indoor air quality, but by themselves they cannot keep a building from becoming an unhealthy place to breathe. Topic: <laughs> Limit values for VOC emissions. Limit values for VOC emissions into indoor air are published by AGBB, AFSSET, California Department of Public Health, and others. These regulations have prompted several companies in the paint and adhesive industries to adapt with VOC level reductions their products. VOC labels and certification programs may not properly assess all of the VOX emitted from the product, including some chemical compounds that may be relevant for indoor air quality. Each ounce of colorant added to tint paint may contain between 5 and 20 grams of VOX. A dark color, however, could require 5 to 15 ounces of colorant, adding up to 300 or more grams of vox per gallon of paint. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Chemical fingerprinting. The exhaled human breath contains a few thousand volatile organic compounds and is used in breath biopsy to serve as a VOC biomarker to test for diseases such as lung cancer. One study has shown that, "...volatile organic compounds are mainly blood-borne and therefore enable monitoring of different processes in the body," and it appears that VOC compounds in the body, "...may be either produced by metabolic processes or inhaled, absorbed from exogenous sources," such as environmental tobacco smoke. Research is still in the process to determine whether vox in the body are contributed by cellular processes or by the cancerous tumors in the lung or other organs. <laughs> VOC sensors <laughs> Principle and measurement methods Vox in the environment or certain atmospheres can be detected based on different principles and interactions between the organic compounds and the sensor components. In many cases, vox are detectable to the human nose, and odor wheels are sometimes developed to help humans classify complex odors of wine, coffee, and even paper. There are electronic devices that can detect ppm concentrations despite the non selectivity. Others can predict with reasonable accuracy the molecular structure of the volatile organic compounds in the environment or enclosed atmospheres and could be used as accurate monitors of the chemical fingerprint and further as health monitoring devices. Solid phase microextraction techniques are used to collect vox at low concentrations for analysis. Direct injection mass spectrometry techniques are frequently utilized for the rapid detection and accurate quantification of vox. PTRMS is among the methods that have been used most extensively for the online analysis of biogenic and anthropogenic VOX. Recent PTRMS instruments based on time-of-flight mass spectrometry have been reported to reach detection limits of 20 pptv after 100 milliseconds and 750 ppqv after one minute, measurement signal integration time. The mass resolution of these devices is between 7000 and 10500 meters delta m thus it is possible to separate most common isobaric vox and quantify them independently topic <laughs> <laughs> accuracy and traceability topic <laughs> <laughs> metrology for voc measurements 
To achieve comparability of VOC measurements, reference standards traceable to SI units are required. For a number of VOX gaseous reference standards are available from specialty gas suppliers or national metrology institutes, either in the form of cylinders or dynamic generation methods. However, for many VOX, such as oxygenated VOX, monoterpenes, or formaldehyde, no standards are available at the appropriate amount of fraction due to the chemical reactivity or adsorption of these molecules. Currently, several national metrology institutes are working on the lacking standard gas mixtures at trace level concentration, minimizing adsorption processes, and improving the zero gas. The final scopes are for the traceability and the long-term stability of the standard gases to be in accordance with the data quality objectives DQO, maximum uncertainty of 20% in this case required by the WMO, GA program. See also Aroma compound Criteria air contaminants Dutch standards Fugitive emissions Non-methane volatile organic compound NMVOC Novic classification Organic compound Ozone Photochemical smog VOC contamination of groundwater Volatile organic compounds protocol <laughs>